started getting involved in radio and getting involved in Triple R was very divided. It, uh, I guess, because I was sort of part of a gang of new sort of punk rockers, we sort of saw ourselves at the bottom of the heap. And then there was this sort of middle level of what you call the the Carlton bands, Stiletto, Sports, Jojo Z. Uh, and then there was the huge bands that played the big beer barns on the outskirts of town and, and got played on commercial radio. Uh, uh, so there was a huge divide and that's, I, that's why Triple R was so important when it came along because it was the first time that people I knew would actually have a chance of getting some uh, exposure, some, uh, some radio airplay. My favourite memories of Triple R, and they all sort of come flooding back in different ways, uh, certainly when we were broadcasting, we just started broadcasting um, out of uh, Story Hall at, R, at uh, RMIT, uh, and that feeling that the station probably wasn't going to last and you know, didn't have enough money to go through the, to the end of the month or the end of the year. Uh, then moving into the house in Cardigan Street, which really only had one operating studio from memory, because I must have been there for years and I only ever used the one room. Uh, and that was sort of very dank. And I just remember there used to be cigarette uh, ashtrays all over the place, dirty cups of coffee everywhere. Um, almost having to bang the equipment to, to keep it, to uh, keep the turntables going. I'm amazed that Triple R survived, uh, but it didn't just survive. It survived and stuck to what it does well. And that's why I really love the station. It's, it hasn't sort of uh, chiseled off its rough edges. Uh, it hasn't uh, lost its grip on sort of uh, discovering unknown music and treating it with the respect that uh, uh, even if only uh, you know 20 people are buying the record, if, if someone on Triple R loves it, uh, you know they'll play it. Triple R is the jewel in the junk heap. It needs your support. Subscribe.